All right, so welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can get started with subcommands. Now, subcommands are actually a really awesome feature because it allows you to create more organized commands. You can create groups of commands, right? Um, and I, I just think it's great. Now, there are some uh, limitations with subcommands. Um, but one thing that it mentions over here is that using subcommands or subcommand groups will make your base command unusable. So what that means is that if you have, uh, let's say, for example, if you have a permissions command, right? And let's say you have a subcommand add or remove, you will not be able to use the permissions command anymore. Uh, you will only be able to use permissions and then the subcommand itself. So that's something that you should consider. Okay. But, you know, if you're aware of this and you're not, you don't really care about it, then, you know, that's a uh, fair game for you. Uh, also, another thing is that uh, subcommands and subcommand groups will appear at the top level in the command explorer. Okay, and this may change in the future. So that's just me reading what Discord has on the docs. Anyways, so you can see that uh, they also show you valid structures of uh, commands and subcommands, right? So, for example, you have a base command and then you have two subcommands. You have the base command and then you have a subcommand group. And inside that subcommand group, you have all the subcommands you want. So you can create a very uh, complex system, which will help you in the long run. There's also one where there's a command, there's a subcommand group. Because let's say, for example, uh, you just have one base command that just has so many different possible commands that you want to group it into different ones, right? You could do that, right? Uh, they show you an uh, invalid structure. So this would be where if you create a command and then a subcommand group, and then you create a subcommand group inside that, you cannot do a subcommand group inside a subcommand group. Uh, and you also cannot do a subcommand group inside of a subcommand, which doesn't really make any sense. Okay. But yeah, like, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, they also show you some more docs on how this works. But let's go ahead and create our own uh, subcommand right now. We'll just do a subcommand. We won't work with groups, but that's something that we'll probably work with later. Okay, so uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? Let's go ahead and create a new file. I'll call this uh, band.js. So we'll create a band command. And this band command will be the base uh, command. And it will have two subcommands. It will have a soft band. Uh, or actually, we could do three. Soft band, temp band, or perma band. Okay, so let's do band command. Let's set the name to band. Bands a user from the guild. And then instead of uh, doing this, so instead of add user option, because we have to change that, we're just going to do add subcommand. Okay. And uh, let's go over to the example real quick to see how they did this. And I'll explain to you how this works. So when you call add subcommand, you basically pass in a callback function. And that callback function is going to give you that subcommand instance. And you can use this to set the name set the description, add the user option, add string option. So it pretty much works similar to a regular slash command. If you've seen the other episodes before, you saw that every single um, command that we worked with, we were able to add stuff like user options. We were able to add stuff like string options, etc. Right. In our case, since we're dealing with banning users, we probably want to do user option. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and pass in the callback function. So let's do subcommand set name. So this will be temp set description temporary bands a user. And we'll do add user option. Okay, and then we'll pass in the callback function for that. Right? Again, it's really similar to how we have add user option here. Okay. So let's go ahead and set the name user. Description, user to be banned. And let's save this, and this should work. I don't think there's any issues. Let's just double check the docs. Okay, yeah, seems pretty good. Though they do add a subcommand group, but that's optional. You don't really need one. Okay, and I won't do one for now. So let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and import this into our code. So let's do band command. And let's go down here and let's go bin command. There we go. We will organize this a lot better later on, but don't worry about it for now. 
and let's look in our code everything seems to be working perfectly no errors we just have to wait um we just have to wait for our bot to log in so let's go to discord let's go over here and our bot should be our bot's still not logged in well wow. it's been about 20 seconds let's restart i guess we might be we might be rate limit who knows i don't even know uh but we should see, yeah there we go our uh, our bots logged in so let's go for that ban command so where is it so you can see that it says ban temp okay and then user Wait, what's going on there we go okay i don't know why that bugged out for a little bit but you can see that now we can select the user we want to ban okay and then if we hit enter Obviously, nothing's going to happen because we don't have the logic implemented yet. But this is how you could create a, uh, this is how you would create a base structure for a band command, right? The whole purpose is me showing you how to actually implement the subcommand. Now, let me show you how we can implement another subcommand within this band command. So let's go over here. We'll add a subcommand right over here. And the same thing, we'll pass in the callback function. And that argument is going to be the subcommand instance. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the name. So this will be uh, temp, and then there's perm, perma, and then we'll set the description uh, permanently bans a user, and then add the user option, and then you can go ahead and just I'll just do the same thing. I'll just copy and paste this because I'm lazy let's do that all right and now if we save bots logged in let's try this again band and now you can see uh there is band temp and then band perma i'm not sure why this still shows up oh you know why it's because this is the built-in one so ignore this one you can see that we have band temp band perma and then we have to obviously provide a user and then there we go so that's how you can work with sub commands. And of course, uh, they just work regular, regular, like regular slash commands, right? You can add whatever option you want. You can add user options. You can add string options, integer options. Maybe if you want to add like an optional, like file attachment as like proof of why they're being banned, you do that as well. It's totally up to you, but hopefully this makes sense of how sub commands work. Now, if we wanted to group together these two commands, because let's say, for example, we might have more uh, commands that fall under the base band command, right? We could definitely uh, group together everything. And the way we do that, it's pretty simple. You can see that over here, there's this add sub command group. And uh, you can see that they set the name, they set the description, and then they add both of the, uh, they, can, they just add the command over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me do this real quick. Uh, let's do add sub command group. And it's just going to take in a callback function. And that group parameter is going to be the slash command sub commit sub command group builder. And then all we'll do is just set the name first. We'll just do. Uh, um, uh, let's just do. Uh, let's just do. Uh, let's see. I'll just I'll just call this group A for now. I don't really know what the hell what the hell to call it to be honest with you. Group A. But I I can't really think of a good name to be honest because there's really so much there's only like a limited amount of options that you have for banning users. So uh, I just want to just do this just for the sake of demonstration. So let's add the sub command. So yeah, I think we can just add the sub commands very easily by chaining them together. So we added two right over here. So hopefully there's no issues. Okay, and then right now this is just group A. And we'll go ahead and add one for group B. Let's just wait for this to restart. Let's see. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Just got to play the waiting game. Okay, 
So let's try this. So let's do bin. And you can see that there's group A, right? So band group A. So this is the group, right? So you have band group A perma, right? Band group A temp. And then if you wanted to add another subcommand group, you just do that again. Add subcommand group over here. And then just pass in callback function set name. I'll just call this uh, B. It's a description. B. And then just add a subcommand. So subcommand. Let's just go ahead and do sub command set name. So let's just call this soft band for now. Set description, soft band. I'm not going to bother adding a user option because I'm just going to show this for demonstration. And let's go ahead and uh, look at our app. So it restarted, which is good. So now let's do slash band again. You can see now there's group B. So band B soft, band group A perma, band group A temp, right? Now, this is all nice and all, but like the question is, right, how do we actually handle things like subcommands and stuff? Well, the nice thing is that uh, if you actually wanted to handle these uh, options, right, if you actually go over to the interaction object, you should be able to get the uh, get a lot of different information about the command itself. So, for example, uh, there should be a way where you can actually get uh, the, uh, let's see, the subcommand, I think. But it should be able to give you the data though, and I'll show you that in another in another episode, okay? But anyways, uh, hopefully this video was pretty straightforward. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.